Dell recently announced an update to its venerable Dell XPS 13, a laptop in which it released in 2015 to rave reviews with its Infinity Edge display, sleek industrial design, and overall great performance. Well, it was in need of a redesign and Dell finally came through. I will be attending CES 2018 and I will be getting my hands on time with this new Dell XPS 13 in alpine white and of course the traditional silver. I also have one on order, so stay tuned for a full review. But with this new version means that the last version, also with the Intel 8th generation quad-core CPU, will actually be on sale. And to me, this may be the best bargain yet. Hey everybody, it's Andrew from AMD Tech, and this is my review of the Dell XPS 13 9360. Let's find out if it's worth your money. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as I have a lot of great things planned for 2018. And of course, don't forget to follow me on Twitter for the latest updates and my CES 2018 coverage starting tomorrow. And of course, thanks everybody once again as we recently passed the 20,000 subscriber mark. For those of you that are on the fence of whether to get the new version, the new Dell XPS 13, or the one I'm reviewing now, there are some key differences. First, you can now get a 4K Infinity Edge display. With something that was exclusive to the Dell XPS 15, now you can get it on the Dell XPS 13. There's a new color, Alpine White, it's woven glass fiber, and you also get a thinner and lighter design. You got a centered webcam, but it's still in an awkward position in my opinion, still on the bottom of the display. And now you you get Thunderbolt 3 support with four lanes, an upgrade of only the two lanes that were available on the last model. But with the thinner and lighter design comes a smaller battery, 52 watt hours down from the 60 on the review unit that I have here. Gone are the USB type A ports and the full size SD card slot to be replaced by a micro SD card slot. I'm not sure how I feel about any of that. And that being said, there is a price to pay to have that 4K option. In fact, it's a $350 premium over the full HD model. And I'm not sure if it's really worth it. I will get my hands on time with that 4K model, so I will report my findings from the floor at CES 2018, so stay tuned for that. Now consider that I picked up the model I'm reviewing now, the 9360, for $750 from Microsoft and it comes with a full HD Infinity Edge display and it's a touch display. You get that great 60 watt hour battery and I hope battery life will not be an issue on the new model with its smaller battery. Of course I will be doing my full review on that so I will report my findings. And I'm going to start off with its strongest feature, its battery life. That 60 watt hour battery produces some really excellent run times. Now I have the full HD model, it's a touch display, that infinity edge touch display with the very small bezels. I'm able to get anywhere from 12 to 12 and a half hours without babying the device. And what I mean is under my AMD Tech Endurance test with 40% screen brightness doing Netflix, YouTube, some light gaming, some light Photoshop, some web browsing under the edge browser you're looking at 12 to 12 and a half hours of course your mileage may vary depending on the task at hand and if you decide to go with the non-touch full HD version you're looking at a whopping 16 hours ladies and gentlemen this is certainly best in class I don't care what anybody says and to put that battery life into perspective, here's how it did against its competition. It certainly trounced the category average, and it certainly beat the HP Spectre X360 13T, late 2017. Check out my full review. I actually think that's one of the best on the market as far as a convertible is concerned, but this even outdid that in terms of battery life. And check out Notebook Check to see how the Core i7 version fared. It did really well. Here are some of the numbers against some of its other competition as well. It has a 45 watt charger, takes about an hour and 45 minutes to fully charge this device from zero to 100%. And another strong suit of this device is its display. Now I chose to go with the full HD display that has a resolution of 1920 by 1080. It also went with a touch version, so that's pretty good in terms of touch responsiveness. It has 166 pixels per inch and it has a 16 by nine aspect ratio. Now the colors are pretty accurate in terms of the color gamut, 98% sRGB, 78% Adobe RGB, and it gets pretty bright at 368 nits, making this 
good for both indoor and outdoor use, although in direct sunlight you may have some issues due to its glossy display. And to put that the display brightness into perspective, here's how it did against its competition. It beat the MacBook 2016, it did better than the ZenBook 3, Lenovo X1 Carbon, and the category average of 285 nits. This is one of the brighter panels you'll find out there right now. The blacks are very deep, the colors are very vibrant, and seem to pop off the display, really sharp full HD panel. Of course, you can opt for the QHD Plus version. That has a resolution of 3200 by 1800. To me, that's a bit overkill. You're gonna lose out on battery life that you would get on the full HD model. So I would choose the touch version of the full HD model. It really is a sharp full HD panel. Now the unit I have has the 8th generation Intel Core i5-8250U CPU. That's an upgrade of about 40% boost in performance over the prior KB Lake U model from last year. Now you could also get this with 128 gigabytes of SSD storage, but I recommend going with a minimum of 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. And I would opt for more RAM. You can also go with 16 gigabytes if that's in your budget. And performance was actually pretty good, a 40% boost over last year's model. And here's how the built-in graphics did, 20,945. And if you're thinking about the Core i7 model, here's how it fared against this competition, 14,151, certainly better than the category average of 7,807. And on the model I have, the lower end model, they went with a slower drive and it was only pretty good in terms of read. Writes were not that good at 138.6. The higher end models will have better, faster drives for sure. And here's how it did on the 3D Mark scores. Firestrike Extreme, Firestrike, Cloudgate, and Ice Storm Unlimited. Obviously this is not a AAA gaming machine, but you can do some low to mid-level gaming on this device. Now, if you're looking for a dedicated gaming machine, look at the Dell XPS 15, because it will get a 45 watt CPU, and it will give you more power out of its dedicated GPU. But that being said, you can do some gaming. Check out the frame rates. Again, the older games you can play, medium to low will give you playable frame rates. But as you move up to the more modern games with a higher graphics processor requirements, it certainly will get bogged down. And under heavy load, the fan will kick in. Now it's not very loud, but it will go into effect when this is put under a lot of stress. Here's a breakdown as far as thermals are concerned, courtesy of Notebook Check. Check out the review of this product. They really do a good job, they're very thorough. But here you can see from the diagram, it does get a bit warm above the keyboard and on the bottom as well. And here it is with the cover off. Now there is that one fan. The new model will have two fans. You can see the killer wireless on there, the 60 watt hour battery, the M2 SATA SSD drive, and of course the RAM is DDR3. One of the reasons why I think this gets such good battery life, it's not the more power hungry DDR4, but nonetheless, this is what it looks like with the cover off. It runs Windows 10 Home, and of course, as I stated, this has eight gigabytes of RAM. If you can afford it in your budget, go with the 16 to certainly make a bigger difference, but even with the eight, it does pretty well. It has Bluetooth 4.1, no issues with pairing, and it has killer wireless 1535, it's dual band wireless, it's AC, and it worked pretty well. Look at these downloads, uploads, looking pretty good. Now, some people have gotten tired of this design. I think it's very functional. I like the carbon fiber deck on the inside and the CNC machined aluminum on the outside. It really is a very solid, rock solid, in fact, design and construction. I like it, but you know, some people wanted a redesign and I don't think for some actually it didn't go far enough in terms of the new redesign. We'll see how the reaction to it is from the public as it becomes readily available. Speaking of poor design choices, they still went with the same webcam they have in 2015 on the lower left-hand portion of the display with a very unflattering angle. And unfortunately, with the new version, all they did was move that to the center. It's still on the bottom portion of the display, and it's still in the awkward position, giving you those up-your-nose webcam action. And I'm not really happy about it. And I think this is time that they start redesigning this with people in mind, because other manufacturers who make devices with small bezels have managed to fit HD webcams into that small space. I don't know why Dell doesn't. It's still the same problem from 2015, and it's not good that it's still persistent to this day. 
Now, as far as the keyboard is concerned, it's largely remained unchanged since its debut in 2015. 1.3 millimeters or so of key travel. I like it. Some people find it a little bit too spongy. I actually think it's pretty comfortable to type on. I'm rather used to it. I actually like it. And I think they do a good job on their keyboard. It's a nice backlighting. It has multi-level backlighting. And I think it worked really well. As far as the touchpad is concerned, some people think it's on the small side. I actually think it's okay. You can do two finger scrolling. Windows 10 just as work as advertised. You can do pinch to zoom. Everything seems to be working pretty well. It's not the greatest trackpad in the world, but it certainly is functional and you can use it without any issue for the most part. And having the touch screen is really convenient, especially in Windows 10. Great for scrolling, great for pinch to zoom, great for just navigating through Windows 10 OS and they include a fingerprint sensor for Windows Hello Login. It worked really well, registering my finger pretty much every time I used it. Now, as far as ports are concerned, you won't be disappointed. On the right side of the device, you have a Kensington lock port, USB Type-A, it's 3.0, and a full-size SD card slot for storage expansion, something you don't get on the new version. They went with a micro SD card slot, sadly. And on the left-hand side, you have your battery indicator light. Really nice to have that, especially when you want to know how much juice you have left without turning the device on. You have your 3.5 millimeter headset jack, worked well, no interference, and you have a second USB USB Type-A, a Thunderbolt 3 port that's only two lanes, the new version will support four lanes, and of course your power port. You can charge all the, also, by the way, with USB Type-C. I actually like the speakers. I think they are pretty rich, pretty full in sound. Volume is very good. I have no complaints in terms of audio on this device. Here's a quick sample of the audio on the Dell XPS 13. Let me know in the comments section below. Let me know what you think. So to bring it all home, can I recommend this Dell XPS 13 9360, or should you get the new version, the all new Dell XPS 13, which was just announced? And the answer is, it depends. If you're in the market for a 4K Dell XPS 13, obviously get the new version, but there are some caveats the biggest one, in my opinion, being the lack of ports, the USB Type A's are gone, the full size SD card is gone. All of this you'd get on this device. And you're also gonna get a smaller battery. In this version, you're gonna get a 60 watt hour battery, 12 plus hours, really is excellent. And in a lot of ways is a game changer. But if you want a new refreshed design, Thunderbolt 3 support with four lanes, not two lanes, and you just want to get the latest and greatest, then hold out for that new one. I will be checking it out and reviewing it coming very soon. But you really can't go wrong with the 9360. I picked mine up for $750, and to me, that is a steal, considering you're getting that excellent display, excellent battery life, and excellent performance with a tried and true design. I'm going to give this a 91%, checking all the boxes you'd want in a 13-inch Ultra Portable, earning the AMD Tech Editor's Choice for that 13-inch laptop category, making this worth your money. So what do you think about the Dell XPS 13? Now, as you know, the new version came out yesterday. They announced it. Dell is going to be showing it off at CES 2018. I will be there next week. I will be at the Dell Experience. I will get you some video, hopefully, and some hands-on time with the new Dell XPS 13 in Alpine White, and of course, in that traditional silver with that carbon fiber interior. But I wanna let you know that what I got this device, the Dell XPS 13, the full HD touch model, now it's what is considered the old model, although it, is, although it does have an eighth generation Intel Core i5 processor, it still is great. Battery life off the charts. I was getting anywhere from 11 and a half to 12 hours easily, and I wasn't babying the device. I was really running it pretty hard. Some really excellent battery life, one of the best in the business. This really is, as they say, a workhorse, and this is definitely in that category. Rock solid build, love the carbon fiber inside, love the uh, solid 
aluminum construction, unibody construction on the outside. Really excellent, although it won't wow anybody. It really is rock solid. But again, I'm curious to know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. I am curious to know. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.